Welcome back. Ireland Contracting, nightly sports call. Bob Pompiani, Chris Muller. We went a little heavy in that first segment, so we're going to go right to the lines, Chris. A lot of people want to weigh in. Fred in North Huntington is first. Go, Fred, you're on. Hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? Very good. Thank you. Hey, uh, two two questions. Uh, with, with, two, with two games within five days, Bob, you know, I'm, I'm concerned with the injuries, too. To get out of the two games with two wins would be a blessing, but also be a blessing just to get out of there, you know, healthy. And uh, my other comment would be maybe you guys can answer this question uh the bowl season for college college football do they plan on doing the same amount of bowls or is it cut in half or how are they doing that with the college bowl season whatever's left they i see the pinstripe bowl got canceled we'll get to that in a second Sun but Chris, bowl got canceled too well hey it's been a gloomy second kind of year long, well that that, i say sense. that bob i say that because it's the second longest running bowl continuous running bowl to the rose bowl it's been played 86 straight years uh that's and kind Pitt of a has played an 85 though. straight uh, Sun Bowl. So where are they going to play? Then? I was going to say it's between it's between the Sun, the BBVA <laughs> Compass, and maybe the Belk Bowl. But they should have probably canceled the Sun Bowl for good after Pitt Oregon State many years ago. Uh, by the way, if you're worried about the whole two games in five days, I get that. But what were they going to have if they had Steelers Ravens Thursday night? Right. I mean, it was going to be two games in four and a half days. The real problem here is three games in twelve, which is what they're looking at after that Washington game. That is a brutal, brutal stretch. And I know they've weathered everything to this point, but, man, outside of not having to see Jackson in this game, if and when it's played, this is not an easy run for the Steelers in a season that's been full of bad runs for them. Yeah. I give Tomlin credit, though. He somehow has finagled some time off and, and given these guys some time off to compensate for the last of the – uh, loss of the bye week they had earlier. So, uh, you know, some health-related issues. I know Cam Hayward certainly needed some extra time. You would think that Roethlisberger's arm needed some extra time just because of where we are in the middle of the season. So that's probably a good thing. Let's go to Dave in Trafford. Chris, he joins us right now. Hey, Dave. Uh, yes, uh, you originally answered my question about why uh, the game, Baltimore game, was pushed back. Uh, I have another question. Why was Antonio Brown allowed to play in week nine when he had an eight game suspension he wasn't even on a team yeah but apparently the rules were it took place at the start of the season originally i thought it was after he signed chris but uh it was from the beginning so he knew that he could be eligible in week nine and they they signed him i think week seven and knew that he had to sit out of the one game but he was available for the saints game which they ultimately lost anyway that experiment's working out real well so far, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you who looks pretty bad there. A 10-second opinion on the Buccaneers. How many Super Bowls does Tom Brady have? Six. Yeah. Bruce Arians needs to swallow his pride and run whatever Brady wants to run and call plays that Brady wants to run because otherwise this is going to work out very poorly for all involved and it's going to come back on B.A. Yeah, but I didn't like how Brady handled it last night, though. I mean, he walked out of a question that was, I think, legitimate people wondering question. Chris, and uh, he just looked like he's a uh, whiny baby. And, he's being and a whiny baby. It's not the baby. look that he needs, and I realize he has standards that other guys have never met, and he's operating under that. I get it, but at the same time, he's also the face of that team, and he's act a little bit better than he did. Let's go to Tim in Pittsburgh. Tim, welcome to the Sports Call. Go ahead. Hey, gentlemen. Um, my my favorite comment on uh, all of this on the uh, on social media is all the Yinzers. Demanding that they that they move the Christmas tree lighting. Um, I think the city of New York and uh, uh, you know the people that own Rockefeller Center uh, are not going to worry about a uh, uh, about uh, you know Yinzers seeing their football game. Yeah, but um, it's it's a national I mean, thing. It, it has nothing to do with Pittsburgh necessarily. It's this is what yeah. people around the country want to see, and now it's three forty out west. It's twelve forty. People are going to be at work, those who do still work, or even if you're working at home, Chris, it's the wrong time for this game to be played, given everything that's been built up. I agree. So that's why what you should do in protest is not listen to the broadcast on TV, mute your TV, you know, you could turn it on or whatever, and then make sure you turn on the PM team on 93.7 <laughs> The Fan and let us provide sort of a running, entertaining commentary on all the proceedings. That's my suggestion well, <laughs> uh, to the Pittsburghers out there. It's a bad time to have a radio show. It's also a bad time to have sportscasts going on at the same time, but <laughs> this is where we are. Well, you need it at 4.15 when Andrew Filipponi heads in for the uh, sports desk kit. You need to make sure you're right here on KDK, you know, you're on KDK <laughs> TV, making sure you catch that. That's my point here. And then maybe right. you leave it there and just listen to the PM team. Sure. All right, let's go out to Seth and Carrick. Hey, Seth, welcome to the show. Go ahead. Hey, Bob, Chris, love the show. Uh, how you guys do? You guys are fired up tonight. 
Well, it's one of those nights, you know. And I'm, I'm fired <laughs> up, too. But my question is, uh, whenever I tune into the game on uh, Chris's station, uh, do you think there's any kind of chance that it's going to be postponed again? I don't see it, but... If it is, there should be a forfeit. Out. I'm Absolutely. sorry. Thank you. Because the Ravens were the ones who started this whole thing by violently, not violently, by willingly, you know, going against the protocols. This guy knew what he was doing. And yet what, what I don't understand, Chris, is how did they not know at the time? If he's not wearing a mask in there, how was he allowed to even operate on, or not operate, you know, deal with players not wearing a mask? If he didn't have the bracelet on, aren't they supposed to know when that thing's on and off? How did they allow that to go only after the fact that they say, well, we're going to discipline him now? They must have known. Yeah, I mean, I, I also like when this guy gets named in public because we all know who it is. Steve Saunders, flagrant disregard for the protocols, should be fired. I'll happily call for his firing. I don't care. They should fire him. You know, if this was a college program, I think Dale Lawley uh, said this earlier today, and I'll give him credit for a good point here, Bob. If this was a college program, would we not be looking at John Harbaugh for a wild lack of institutional control of his coaches and his players and everything, in this case, one of his coaches? We would absolutely run it up the ladder to the head guy on the coaching staff, and that's what should happen here. Saunders should be terminated by the Ravens, and John Harbaugh should face steep discipline, up to and including a major fine for him, throw another one at Bishotti. I mean, this is ridiculous. I also, to answer the caller's question, do not believe this game is going to get moved again. I think it's going to happen at 340. But the absolute disregard for the protocols here by two people who are in positions of management, basically, if you want to call it that, is just unconscionable by Baltimore. It is. And they have not used that forfeit, but it's there. They put them out uh, themselves, the NFL, in their latest uh, memo to the league. It's there. So if ever there was a time to use it, if this should get postponed again, then this is the time to use it. Now it's time for our Tri-State Office Furniture Tweet of the Day. And this comes to us. I thought it was the funniest comment of the day. Zach Banner, who's on your BM team uh, a lot, uh, he said, I'm going to be healthy by the time we play this game again. <laughs> And that pretty much sums it up, how long it's taken. We'll be back with more of your calls right here. We're live, and this is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, Pittsburgh CW.